On this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang, I'm featuring the Classical Theater of Harlem's production of Malvolio, an irreverent comedy written by Mellon Foundation playwright-in-residence Betty Shamia as a sequel inspired by Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. Directed by Ian Belknap and Ty Jones, with choreography by Del Howlett, Malvolio is Classical Theater of Harlem's 11th season offering of free Uptown Shakespeare in the Park at the Richard Rogers Amphitheater at Marcus Garvey Park in Harlem, Tuesday through Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Alan Gilmore leads the cast as Malvolio, alongside Tony nominee John Andrew Morrison as King Chatlio, J.D. Mollison as Prince Furtado, Kaneda Kanutu as Volino, Marjorie Johnson as the nurse, Stephanie Berry as Olivia, Perry Gaffney as Viola, David Ryan Smith as Sir Toby Belch, Paula Galloway as Mariah, Matthew J. Harris as the fool, Gabriel Lawrence as Orsino, and Nathan M. Ramsey as Sebastian. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Everyone needs to come and see Classical Theater of Harlem's Malvolio starring Alan Gilmore here and a host of theater legends, including John Andrew Morrison, Marjorie Johnson, Perry Gaffney, David Ryan Smith, and Stephanie Berry. Fabulous cast, fabulous cast, beautiful people. So, so beautiful. Amazing costumes. Amazing costumes. Amazing set. The, spe you know, the, the, the special effects. The, there's a big digital wall that is the back of the stage that they make do in amazing things. There's a whale in the ocean. What does it feel like to have a play written for you? Well, in all honesty, it wasn't actually, the secret is, it wasn't written for me. Um, Betty Shamia, who is behind us dressed in red, maybe you can see her, she's camera ready now. Uh, she says that she wrote it nine years ago. But you know, when they did uh, Twelfth Night last year in Marcus Garvey Park at the Richard Rogers Amphitheater, uh, of course, she saw it, and uh, they were like, we've got a Malvolio here, you know, that uh, you might be interested in. And so, you know, long story short, she was like, yeah, that's my guy. And they were like, let's do that play. What does it mean for you to have Classical Theater of Harlem commission and produce Malvolio at this time? Well... It's absolutely a dream come true, especially in a time where theaters are closing and shutting down and uh, doing smaller and smaller plays. And I think it's, it's exactly what I got in this game to do, which is a big celebratory story that has poetry and dance and uh, m movement of the soul. And so it, it, for me, you know, as a woman of color, responding to the canon and kind of making it my own was really, really a leap of faith. And I actually started working on it before I was in residence at the Classical Theater of Harlem. And I just stayed around <laughs> and hung out. Yes. And they produced Twelfth Night. And I was like, hey, <laughs> what about my sequel? And then I interviewed Alan and they announced at the same time and I video recorded Ty saying he was doing my show and I still don't believe it and I don't believe it now. So <laughs> here I am uh, on the eve of our opening night in disbelief <laughs> of you know the scale and the kind of operatic nature and the deep, deep commitment to you know, giving a living author the kind of love and support and finances and collaborators that you do Old dead white guys. What should viewers expect to see when they come? 
Um, Leah, it's not the same. If they saw Twelfth Night last year, they don't have, you know, it doesn't matter. You, you can come and see it without having seen that. But if you saw Twelfth Night last year, you'll be like, oh, wow, he's changed. This is not the same Malvolio that, you know, we saw storm off the stage. It, it's really because Betty, the playwright, Betty Shamia, um, she just fell in love with the character of Malvolio when she read Twelfth Night as a as a an eighth grader or something like that. She felt such a kinship that she wanted to write a play about that character in a sense to set his universe right, um, if that's not telling too much. Uh, because at the end of Twelfth Night, he goes off almost crazed with pain and the need for revenge for a very humiliating prank that was played on him, practical joke. So uh, she has written this play, and it doesn't really um, begin with somebody who's still in the throes of pain and madness. It's 20 years later. And it's very interesting because you see somebody who has done some work on themselves. Uh, they are still not whole, you know? So that's where the story begins. They're still not whole, and, and we're hoping that they find wholeness uh, during the run of the events in Malvolio. Now, when we chatted about how rehearsals were going, mm -hmm. you told me that you were having some challenges because the cast that is assembled around you, with you, uh, well, I'm going to let you talk about that. They're hilarious, you know, and I think of myself as a clown, essentially, Leah, as a comedian. So, and I am the, in this show, I am that straight man, fulcrum, around which the clowns fly and bounce and you know and there's some brilliant brilliant clowns in this show there's some funny funny stuff in this show if i start naming names i'll name everybody but particularly you have to be looking at jam uh john andrew morrison who of course was a tony nominee for uh strange loop plays king chadlio that's a new character that uh betty created for this show and there's some other holdovers from 12th night uh, uh, Chad Leo's son, Furtado, is played by J.D. Mollison, hilarious. A wonderful fool slash festy, uh, played by Matthew Harris, and, you know, just a lot of really zany, quirky, crazy stuff. Hi all, I'm Del Howlett and I am the choreographer for Malvolio, Betty Shamia's play here at Marcus Garvey uh, Park at the Richard Rogers Amphitheater. Come out and check us out. We are going to jam all what month. What did you draw from in terms of your inspiration? Well, w Betty's writing is so vivid um, and so it screamed out to uh, be animated and to be vivified in that way. But I also think um, when I talked to Ty and Ian, uh, the directors, co-directors of the show, they talked a lot about this design that had to do with Afrofuture. And so pulling on all of the different uh, dance styles that come out of African and African-American and diasporic traditions, you'll see social dance in the show, you'll see some step dancing in the show. And so those are the, really the things that really inspired me. And then some uh, kind of contemporary movement that kind of come, came from me. So it's kind of a mix of movements, but um, uh, that Afro future is really the idea that kind of I've kind of held on to.
And to be directed by Ian Belknap. Ian Belknap, who is an alum like I am of the acting company, and Ty Jones, who is the artistic director of uh, Classical Theater of Harlem. It was a dream. It was really a dream come true. And to be playing, you know, a role that I played, the, anyway, the, the title of the role that I played last year, to be, you know, returning to that character, though a little bit different this year, has been a dream. And, you know, the other thing that I wanted to say, and I, I it, it is very interesting about where this play begins because it is 20 years after the events of Twelfth Night finish. And we all change, Leah, you know, in 20 years. So you can say, oh, he's not the same Malvolio that we saw, but none of us is the same person from 20 years ago. What I want Betty to do is write the prequel to the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you here at Marcus Garvey Park.